so the rate cuts in June are, uh, are, are not as likely. Uh, the market is still pricing in rate cuts in July. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw less rate cuts and pushed more towards the, the end of the year. This is a strong economy. Um, the, make, make no mistake, it is backed by debt and uh, somewhat uh, by uh, overburdened credit cards, but it is a strong economy. So the Fed uh, will struggle to find the case to, to, to cut rates soon. George, what are we dealing with when it comes to the jobs market? Because that is what seems to continue to foil the uh, central banks. That we've still got this very strong immigration story that's playing out in the United States. More productivity, more participation. At what point do we see some of these factors start to tilt in the opposite direction? First of all, what we're dealing with is a 6.5% deficit funding the economy. Uh, so uh, it's it's natural that a lot of that money will find their way into you know in, into the real economy, um, and uh, if you add the immigration story to to it, obviously you get a very positive picture. Having said that, the U.S. Uh, is projected to run uh, a, a very high deficit through the next years. It is projected to pay 3.5% of its GDP in interest payments in the next few years while growing 2%. Uh, and it's projected to have, uh, a one, uh, 131 debt to GDP in, uh, by, by 2028 by the CBO, the Congressional Budgeting Office. So what we're seeing is a political choice made not to have a recession ahead of an election, not to have a slowdown, but rather steam ahead and have a strong economy. And the Fed, which is an independent institution, now has to take all of that into account and consider what this all means for rate cuts. Yeah, good morning to you, George. I mean, the question here is, are you surprised that you have so many Fed speakers pretty much reacting to every piece of data uh, that they find out there, or does this kind of showcase how worried they are about getting this right? So the Fed has been uh, has been punishing itself ever since 2021, when Team Transitory uh, ostensibly got it wrong. My personal contention is that uh, without Ukraine, the picture might have been difficult. But you know that's that's not how we write history. However, what they feel is that they can't get it wrong again, which means that they're more likely to err in the side of caution. Okay, they can't see inflation tick up. And as you very well said, oil is ticking up. Uh, all the PMI um, indices suggest that uh, producer prices have also been picking up. You know, and if it wasn't for China deflating things right now, um, decisions could have been a lot different. And you could have seen an even more hawkish Fed. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to see a more hawkish Fed, I mean, one just needs to consider that if you get an inflation print this week that is even hotter than the market had anticipated, surely you begin to question whether you see any uh, cuts at all. And maybe later on you begin to have the, the thought process that maybe we'll begin to see hikes. Does that fit into any of the algorithms now? I don't think the, the algos are playing that outcome, but it does fit into the thinking of, of a lot of people in the market. Look, uh, in October, uh, which is not that far behind, we were all apprehensive about the many rate cuts uh, that, were, uh, that were in front of us. It is still very likely that we will see rate cuts this year. Okay, because the Fed does have room to cut even today. You know, they could have room to cut half a percentage or even a whole percentage point. Remember, they're not at the neutral uh, rate. They're way above it. So they do have some room to cut, but they don't want to get it wrong. They do not want to be the Fed that cut rates as inflation uh, kept beating expectations. So they want to see more data towards the right direction. And they are willing to wait. The economy, at least, is making it easier for them.